Hey, this is Patrick Quinn. I'm coming to you live this morning. I believe you had a good weekend, and uh, wherever you were, I know the sound of my voice. Um, I'm sitting somewhere, <laughs> so uh, don't don't uh, don't think that uh, fit moment is not fit moment. It's live now. It's live on, and um, it's exciting to uh, to know the things that. God has been doing uh, uh, with us and for us through the understanding of his word, through the understanding of his word. Amen. And so um, um, it is all good. It's been a wonderful time um, in the Lord and it's been very, very wonderful. Great to know that um, the dispensation that we live in now, it is not that which we ought to um, uh, kill ourselves to get the approval or to present ourselves righteous before God. Um, it is the work of the Holy Spirit enabling us to do what we, uh, we can do or we have to do. All right? Um, again, it is of um, um, the love of God that has brought you and I into this dispensation of grace and uh, of faith and of faith let's have a short prayer and uh, we'll get into some discussions of the word okay our heavenly father we are grateful to you and thanking you for what you have done for us blessing you and blessing you and blessing you for thanking you for giving us a new day a new day a blessed day that lord you have made and uh, you've asked us to rejoice and be glad in it. And we're going to do that. We are grateful to you, O Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Um, well, welcome to a new week, a new segment of um, Fit Moment. Um, a broadcast and a platform that brings you understanding of God's word uh, with regards to the dispensation we are living in now and the fact that God is doing, has done, dealt with us very good and still uh, living with us. Um, we have to understand something, beloved that uh, if we're going to enjoy this dispensation of grace, we have to understand that it is, it is, it is uh, what God has given to you and I to enjoy. Are you listening to me? We no longer, <clears throat> it's no longer about um, what we do as we, uh, we see in the, the book of Deuteronomy 28, as to what we do um, um, to get the approval of uh, of God's of, of our righteous of our righteousness before God, are you listening to me? Now you realize I'm trying to settle myself down here, so give me a give me a minute or two. <laughs> Glory be to God, Amen. It's all good. It's 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 good, and just to uh, know that. Listen, it's not you know you don't need to try to impress God. Um, or try to just be so, you know, box straight up to get the blessings of God. God knows you better than you know yourself. He created you. Are you listening? He created you so he knows, he knows you and he knows who you are. So uh, it's, um, it's, it's all about understanding uh, his word and, and live it. And allow the Holy Spirit to help you live what you couldn't do for yourself and uh, thank him for the dispensation that has brought you and I. Are you listening to me? So you don't need to be living a life of uh, guilt and condemnation that, um, oh, you couldn't, you know, um, you couldn't fast 100 days and you couldn't pray, you know, 72 hours and, and you feel guilty and, and, and that God is not pleased with you. No, beloved, that is not, that is not what you ought to live your life. That is that is self being self righteous. That is a self righteous lifestyle. God wants uh, His children. Listen, God wants His children to be free. Are you listening to me? 
if we are not free, we cannot even enjoy what all the promises he has given to us. How can you enjoy the promises if you are not free? And so God wants you to have that understanding that it is not by might, it is not by your power, it is by his spirit. And so don't live condemning yourself, you know, as to what you have not been able to do. Um, especially when you are, you are going through, you know, some short, you know, challenging times. They don't, they don't stay. They don't come to stay the rest of your life. You are not born to just encounter challenges until you, until you die. No. They come to pass through your life to equip you um, and to increase you and to, you know, reposition you. That's, that's, that's what the challenges are. So, of course, I mean, yes, nobody wants it. Human beings, nobody wants no challenge. Nobody wants no, you know, tough times or challenging times or tribulations. But listen to what Jesus says. He says, in this life, you will face tribulations and all those good stuff. But know that he has overcome them all for you. So if Jesus has overcome all these things for you and I, what do you have to do? Rejoice in it. All right, celebrate in it. Now, you can only do that also when you have that understanding. Then you receive what Jesus has done for you. Receive it, believe it, and receive it. And then you can, you know, have a better um, um, understanding and enjoy it. Are you listening? So it's very important for, for us to understand this. So don't, don't be, you know, crucifying yourself uh, you know, because of what you couldn't do and that kind of stuff and all that. Especially, especially if the Holy Spirit, you've been, you are born again, giving your life to the Lord, the Spirit of, uh, the Holy Spirit has come to uh, dwell with you and in you. He is working. It's not an overnight thing. Are you listening? It's not an overnight thing. He is working. He is working and so allow him to do the work that um, you couldn't do for yourself. Are you listening? There's no, no condemnation if you are in Christ. Are you listening? There's no condemnation. And so it's very important for you to be in Christ if you are not. Because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. No. If you were not in Christ, well, then you, you are condemned by the, the, uh, the law, the old law. Are you listening? Then you are condemned by it. But once you are in Christ, no. You are, you've moved from that old law into this dispensation of grace and faith, by faith. Are you listening? So you need to activate your faith, you know, to receive that which God has given to you. You know, Hebrews eleven six tells you and I that without faith, it's impossible to please God without faith. So it's very important for you to, um, to show God your faith. Okay, God wants to see your faith. God wants, wants to see your faith in him, all right? And so have that understanding and show God your faith by receiving the work of Jesus Christ, what Jesus did for you and me on the cross of Calvary. He took upon himself your curse, your sins. There's no more, no, no more, you know, I mean, he has paid it for you. So don't be, don't be walking around with badges on your shoulder that you are a sinner and this and this and all that. Are you listening to me? Don't do that. God bless you, um, uh, Joyce. God bless you for coming on there. Amen. So it's very important for you and I to understand that. Okay, don't, don't be condemning yourself. Because go with me to um, Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. All right, let's read something here very important. Romans 8, look at it. Look at it. Romans 8, verse 1. Verse 1. All right. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> are you listening? Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now, you remember that the Spirit is at work. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, He is at work now in you. And you need to understand that and allow him to do his work in you. Okay? Now, when you 
you were not in Christ, you were under the law. And that is, um, you are justified by what you did. What you try to do and what, I mean, when you do right, you, you receive that blessing. When you do wrong, that curse comes upon you. And so, and, and it was absolutely, again, for, for you to just, con, you know, leave the whole complete, you know, commandment or the, or under that law. It was, it, was, it was nothing that anybody could do. And so we thank God for sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, uh, who's come to fulfill the law for us and then also bring us into this dispensation of grace for which we activate our most holy faith to receive the finished work of Jesus Christ. Okay? So Jesus says in Matthew, in Matthew, the, uh, the fifth chapter, the 17th verse, that he did not come to abolish or do away with the, with the, all, with the law, the Old Testament, if you will but to fulfill it and to bring us into the um into this um um dispensation of grace now um let's read some scriptures all right for you and i to understand that <clears throat> verse 2 of romans 8 verse 2 it says for the law of the spirit of christ of life for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death for the law of sin and death the old law exposes sin to you exposes your sinfulness all right brought you to a place of um, watching yourself in a mirror it was like a mirror letting you see how sinful you know person you are um verse 3 says for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh the law could not do god did did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh are, are you listening he condemned sin in the flesh and so jesus the coming of jesus was to condemn um sin the sinful nature of of um, of you um, in his flesh, he condemned it and you know put it all uh, all away, you know by by uh, nailing it all on the cross. And so, for for verse five says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Are you listening to me? John, come down John, to, to uh, verse 11. It says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. Through his spirit. Through his spirit. So the spirit of God dwells in you, like we said in, the, in, in um, chapter 1. It says, Now therefore there is no condemnation. For those who live in, in um, who who are in Christ, and so so the Spirit of God who now lives in you is helping you to live a life outside the law and bringing you to the life in which you can enjoy the fullness of Christ. Okay, now. Look, look at verse um, 11 again. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. Through his spirit. So it is not any longer how hard you work to get the approval uh, of your righteous standing with God. It's about the spirit that works through you. And so you need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in work in you, and not in your own, you know, ability, for which most of the time you fail. Most of the time you fail. Why do you fail? Sometimes it's not it's not about intentional, you know, um, you intentionally act to fail. The circumstances in which you find yourself in, 
in this world. That's what Jesus says. In this world, you will have tribulations and challenges and troubles. Where did they come from? Did you cause them? Well, some you do, some you didn't. But irrespective, you are in. And um, just know that he says, don't worry, okay? Because he has overcome them. For who? For you. He has overcome them for you. So what, what you have to do is to believe it and receive it and then enjoy, you know, this life of, 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 uh, of, of the abundant grace, the unmerited uh, uh, favor. That is what grace is about. It's an unmerited favor. God so loved the world, including that which he created in it, which is you. That he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come and uh, replace that which you couldn't handle. You, you see the love of God. So this is, I mean, this is very powerful. All right, look at verse 12 now. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Okay? We are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live, if, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You see this. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So this is very important for you to understand that. As many as are led by the Spirit. So you have to, since the Spirit of God lives in you by, re, by receiving Believing and receiving the finished work of God, okay? The Spirit now, the Spirit of God now, the Holy Spirit, takes over in living through you, in you, and uh, working all that needs to be worked out in you, that soon and very soon you see changes in your life. And so allow the Holy Spirit to do His work. Now try to do the, whole, the work of the Holy Spirit, beloved. You you fail, you fail. Don't try to do that. Now, it says that as for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You you see you see the difference, not by the flesh, not by the law, but by the Spirit. As many as are led. So if you allow yourself to be to be led by the Holy Spirit, then you know you are in the path of of righteousness where God is concerned. Are you getting this? Verse, verse um, um, 13, uh, 15. Watch this now. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to, to fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit of adoption who has brought us into this marvelous you know, presence, um, uh, presence of God. He's brought us into, into God through Christ, through the finished work of Jesus Christ. So, beloved, you need to understand this and not, um, you know, um, tear yourself up. Not tear yourself up that if um, you don't do this, you couldn't do that. You know, you, you especially, I mean, when, when you're trying to do things in your own effort and know that, know that you fall short, then you start beating yourself up. But if you, if you know you are in Christ now, you don't have to live like that. You don't have to live like that. Is that now, now is the work of the Holy Spirit. Before it was your work. It was what you have to do. Before it was what you have to do to get approval. But now it's the Holy Spirit living in you who is working in you and you don't have to. Now, and now if, somebody, if somebody is taking care of the business for you, why do you want to worry yourself? Why do you want to worry yourself? So by, by worrying yourself, it's an indication that you don't trust the person that is, is, is doing the work for you. That means you really have not come to that place of uh, believing and receiving. 
the, you know, the finished work of Jesus Christ. If not, then allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. First of all, don't condemn your own self of your, of your past sins and what you are going through thinking that um, God is punishing you. Like some, sometimes you hear stuff like that. God is punishing you um, because of what you have done. Now, if you are in Christ, there's no condemnation for God to punish you. Are you listening? If God, I mean, why, what, that's if you are in Christ, okay? So don't, 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 don't live, don't believe that of the flesh. That, that's, that's the flesh talking to you. You, you are, you now um, have the Holy Spirit, you know, dwelling in you and dwelling and living in you. And he is at work. So listen to the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Okay. Verse 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit himself. So, so you know, it, it all comes to understanding, beloved. It comes to understanding, understanding who you are. Are you listening? If you don't know who you are, you will then be, be you know, um, be, be struggling with this. That uh, you, it's, you have to just, you know, do everything, everything right. I mean, not, I'm not trying to say don't do anything right, but don't kill yourself. And trying to just do everything right. Listen, have you heard this before? When you are, when you become too cautious, you even fail. When you become too cautious, because man could not fulfill that law that was so stringent for you that if you and and the, the thing, the interesting thing is that uh, scripture says that you you must obey all the law. And therefore, if you even fail one, you fail all. Because the law is supposed to be 100% complete for you to fulfill it. So if you fail one, you are fail all, according to James 2. Okay? You are fail all. So there's no way anybody, as, especially being sinful in nature, how are you going to try to, you know, force, you know do all that? Sinful in nature. Do you see? Do you hear what I said? As a result of that which our first parents committed. That that high treason. Are you listening? And so there's no way you can you can just fulfill the complete law hundred percent. And then if you fail one, you fail all. So beloved, now you you go figure. So don't don't be condemning yourself. You know we. We, we 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 are quick to condemn ourselves, even just because maybe things are slow and things are not working uh, the way you want to see it, and all that. Of course, everybody want to see, you know, um, success in their life. Everybody want to see some glorious, you know, times in their lives and all that. But the the life is such that it is not so. All right, don't let anybody lie to you. The life is such that it is not 100%, you know, uh, um, um, uh, glorious. I mean, you, you go through some tribulations, some challenging times. And listen to that, you will go through, you're not staying there. And so these things come, you know, to, to equip you. It comes to motivate you. It comes to challenge you. It comes to uh, increase your understanding and brings you, it brings you closer to God. Because God wants his people to get closer to him. If it wasn't so, he wouldn't have sent Jesus to come. Because he would have let us just you know, live in our sin and die in our sin. But he's, he so loved the world that he created and all that is within, including you. And that he has to, you know, find, make another provision for man to come closer to God. It is, scripture says that it is not God's intention that any perish. It's not, it's not his intention that any perish, but all will have everlasting life. That's what God created you for. 
So give your life to Jesus today. All right. Surrender your life to him. Surrender your everything to him. Surrender your strength, your inability to, to fulfill the law and all that. He has done the work. And all you have to do is to just receive him. All right, Kevin, I see you. God bless you for coming on this platform. Surrender your life to Jesus and allow his, his spirit to take over instead of you trying to do it on your own. You, beloved, you cannot do it. How many times have you seen yourself fail? How many times have you seen yourself falling short? And then you end up condemning yourself. You end up feeling guilty. You end up feeling sorry for yourself. You end up feeling, you know, rejecting and dejecting yourself. Why? Because you try to do it on your own. You try to do it on your own. Beloved, you can't. You just cannot do it. So allow the Holy Spirit to do it. Allow the Holy Spirit to do it. Allow the Holy Spirit to do it. And what you have to do is to by believing and accepting the fact that Jesus died for you. He died for you. For what? For your sins. To do away with your sins. And if he's, he's already done that for you, then what you have to do is to receive it, believe it, and live a life of Understanding, knowing that the Holy Spirit now is taking over what you couldn't do. Are you listening to me? So this is very important for you to understand. Look at verse 16 again of um, Romans 8. Is that the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise unless you have not received Okay, unless you have not received Jesus um, as your Lord and Savior. We are the children of God. Now, if we are the children of God and God, God's, God's approval is upon us, then who is he who condemns you? Or, who, or, or you yourself? Co to condemn yourself and to bring yourself into judgment. Who, who, who are you to judge? What God has, remember uh, Peter um, um, in, a, in a dream uh, saw himself with all these um, animals and, G and God says kill and eat. And he was telling God that God, no, uh, I cannot eat any, anything unclean. And God says, who are you to, to judge what I have unjudged? Who are you to curse what I have blessed? Are you listening to me? He says, we the spirit bears witness with our spirit that yes, we are the children of God. We are the children of God. Unless you don't know that. Unless you don't know that. So all this, I mean, all kinds of things are going to come at you. You are not a child of God. You know, you, you have sinned. You have failed. You, you know, you, you, God is not happy with you and all that. that that's, that's, that's a bunch of lies. You don't need to believe that. Because the Holy Spirit bears witness are you listening he bear witness bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of god and if we are the children of god then we then heirs heirs of god and join heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him then we may also be glorified together hallelujah are you listening and so i mean this is exciting this is wonderful this is this is this is good. This is good stuff for you to know that it is no longer you trying to to work your your tail out, you know, to please God and 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 all that. It is living a, a life of listen. Look at the little children. See, that's why Jesus says, "Be like the little children." You know, we we get we get older a bit, and we think we're too grown not to. Um, not to, um, you know, see ourselves as children of God. And therefore, we want to do everything to please. Beloved, don't do that. Don't do that. God is not, is not expecting you to kill yourself, to please Him. You know what pleases Him? He wants to see your faith. Your faith in what? In the finished work of Jesus Christ. God wants to see your faith that you, 
I mean, you activate your faith to believe that indeed Jesus came to die and paid your, for your sins. And therefore, you are no longer debt, debtor to sin. Look at this. Look, look, look at um, 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 chapter, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we, we were debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. We are not. For if, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Okay? But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. In other words, you no longer, you are no longer a debtor to sin unless you have not given, surrender your life to accept that which Jesus did for you. Unless you have not accepted that. And that is the difference. Because if you, if you have not accepted what Jesus did for you, well, then you are not part of you are not part of the um, of the of the family then you're not part of the family and so you need to accept jesus as your lord and savior why because of what he has done for you are you listening so the spirit you have to now allow the holy spirit look at verse 18 um it's a, uh, paul saying for i consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us okay so what you are going through now and all that like i said it, it's 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 uh, it, it you go through these challenging times to reposition you you know to reorganize you to realign you are you listening to me it's not it's not to condemn you so don't condemn your own self and stop condemn if listen if i i i believe that people who condemn themselves are those who condemn other people why? Because you put on this garment of self-righteousness. You put, you know, this garment of self-righteousness. Because you try to live, you know, a perfect life. Know, knowing that you cannot. And the, the sad thing is you don't even know that you cannot. But you try to live that perfect life. You can't. Are you listening? So allow the Holy Spirit to do what He has come to do in your life in presenting you faultless okay look at uh, verse 26 likewise the spirit also helps in our weakness for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to but the spirit himself make intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. the spirit the holy spirit the purpose of the holy spirit beloved it's not about shaking and, and, and moving and, and, and screaming and that kind of stuff. The Holy Spirit also helps you with your, with your everyday life, with your socioeconomic life. And that's why you need to, you, I'm telling you, you need to talk to the Holy Spirit, get closer to the Holy Spirit, and uh, know the things that He's doing and He's come to do in your life. Are you listening? The Spirit helps us. He helps. He's a helper. Remember, Jesus gave us the promise that um, um, he, was, he will send the helper, okay? He will send the helper, another helper to come. And when he comes, he will lead us into all truth. Beloved, the truth that Jesus was talking about is knowing the fact of the matter, the, the deep things of God, the things of God, the promises of God, which are yea and amen. Are you listening to me? The promises of God which are yea and amen. Okay, so you need to understand this and beloved, allow again the Holy Spirit to work through you. Don't, don't, don't be judge, so judgmental, you know, uh, to yourself and therefore to other people. The Holy Spirit is still working in, in, in us. Now, now, go with me to um, um, look at... Um, um, Second Corinthians, all right. Let's Second Corinthians chapter three. Second Corinthians chapter three. Let's look at some scripture here in the book of Second Corinthians chapter three. Okay. I, I, I hope you're still with me. All right. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter three. 
Okay, look, look at, um, let's, let's, um, let's read from verse 1. All right. Do we begin again to, to commend ourselves? Do we begin to commend ourselves? Or do we need, as some others, epistles of condemnation to you or letters of condemnation from you? <laughs> Listen, are you listening to what uh, Paul is saying? Do we need that, uh, I mean, uh, that let, letters of condemnation from you? Uh, well, you listen, you, you don't need to, you need to understand this thing here. That beloved, it is not by might. It is not by power. It is by the Spirit of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to do His work. See, the reason why you're trying to, you, you know, you condemn yourself and you're feeling guilty of what you're not able to do and uh, you're not able to pray, pray, you know, enough and uh, you're not able to fast enough, you're not able to give enough, you're not able to, you know, to live this self-righteous life enough is because you, you think that, you know, you, you have to, Continue to live in the old dispensation. No, you don't. No, you don't. You have to understand this and, and come and release yourself in the hands of the Holy Spirit to do His work in you and through you. All right. Look at verse, um, verse 2. You are our epistle written... In our let in our hearts, you are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. You are manifestly an epistle of Christ, ministered, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the Living God, not on not on tablets of stones, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. And we have such trust. Through Christ towards God. We have such trust through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves. But our sufficiency is from God. Your completeness is in, is in, is in, is in Christ. Your completeness. Beloved, are you seeing, you seeing what I'm saying? Don't, don't try to kill yourself. To prove yourself right before God, don't you? Because the more you try to do, the more you fail. And if you fail one, take the Ten Commandments. You fail one of them, you have failed all. Because you are to keep all. You are not to break any. So if you break one, you are failed. That's what the old law was. That's what the old covenant was. If you break one, you have failed. Because the commandment was for you to keep all of it. Now ask yourself, could you? Could you? Okay. So, know that our sufficiency is from God. Now watch this now, verse 6. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. God made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. In this new covenant, this better covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. Not of the letter, the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. You get a revelation here. Look at this picture here. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Okay, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of, the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away? How will the ministry of the spirit not... How will the spirit, uh, the ministry of the spirit, not be more glorious? For if this ministry of condemnation, <laughs> I like this one, ministry of condemnation. If the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds more, much more in glory. 
if the ministry of condemnation has any glory in it, then the ministry of righteousness exceeds more in glory. Verse 10, for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Are you getting this? It's much more glorious. Therefore, verse 12, since Therefore, verse 12, watch this now. Verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were hardened. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, okay, a veil lies on their heart. When Moses is read, I mean, what, what was Moses representing? The old law, the old law, the old dispensation, the old covenant. Even to this day, when Moses is, is read, a veil still lies on their heart. That veil is still not covered. So if you want to live in that old dispensation, well, then I want you to know that the veil has not been lifted up of you. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Did you hear that? When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Okay, nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I mean, what more do you need to understand of this? What more? Beloved, did you hear that? Your liberty is as a result of the Spirit of God who has taking over so allow him to take over and maintain his presence in your life yeah you haven't seen what you want to see right now well that doesn't mean that you have come to your to the end of your end of your 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 journey you haven't come to that end yet do you know what's going to happen tomorrow do you know what's going to happen in the next hour? God can do anything. Anything. All you need to know Him is your trust in Him to know that He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above what you can ask or think. God can do anything. Beloved, God can do anything. Unless you don't believe Him that He can do anything. But if you know that God is able to do anything, then, then you rest your case. He can do it. All you need to do is to rest in Him. Trust in Him. Show Him your faith. Let your faith, I mean, lift up your most holy faith in Him. Trust in Him and let Him know that you believe in Him. You know, it feels good when... when when, when somebody says, man, I believe in you. Don't you feel good? Yeah, so is he. So is he. So is God. Let him know you believe in him. Are you listening? Very, very important. Be be beloved, if you don't do this, if you don't do this, then you will be in a place of condemning yourself because you are living in the old dispensation. Mm-hmm. Because in the old dispensation, if you don't, if you are not able to do anything, you, you condemn yourself. You are condemned. Let me show you something, if you think I'm kidding. Go with me to, um, to uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Look at Deuteronomy 28. Just look at it. Let me show you that. Let me show you this. So that you will come to that place of not condemning yourself. Okay? 
of not killing yourself. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay, let me show you, you know, the law and what the law did with regards to the promises of obedience and disobedience or obeying and disobeying. Okay, now watch this now. Look at verse 1. Okay, now it shall come to pass if you diligently, diligently obey, obey the voice of the Lord your God, diligently, okay, to observe, to observe carefully, and watch this word now, all, underline that word, all, all his commandments, which you are commanded, that the Lord your God will set you high above all all nations if you are able to obey all all these blessings will come upon you if you obey all watch this verse 2 all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the lord your god blessing shall be upon you read it all all down down now come to verse 15 all these things will come to you if you obey all not some beloved not some. This is what I'm trying to tell you, that living in that old dispensation was nothing but obeying to receive, disobeying to, re to, to be cursed. Look at verse 15. But, but, it shall also come to pass, if you do not obey, the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which you commanded today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. All these curses. So there's, 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 I mean, the law was for you to obey all, the commandment was for you to obey all. So if you broke one, you have not obeyed all. If you broke one, you have not obeyed all. Are you listening? And so if you were, you were to obey all and to receive all the blessings. Or you are to, to disobey even one and receive the curse. All these curses. Watch this now. Okay. All these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the country. I mean, if you are cursed in whatever city you find yourself in or whatever country you find yourself in, I mean, curse is curse. Are you listening? Because why? You couldn't obey all the commandment. So, beloved, you see why it's very important. And Jesus, watch this now, now. Look at this now. Put yourself, put your, your finger there and go to Matthew chapter 15 and let's see what Jesus says. Matthew, the 15th chapter. All right. Look at what Jesus says. Jesus, when he has come. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 5, sorry. Matthew chapter 5, verse um, 16. Watch this. Let me show you something here. Go with me to Matthew chapter 5. Okay, look at Matthew chapter 5. This is what Jesus said he came to do. Do not think that I came to destroy the law. See, the law that we just we were talking about right now, he didn't come to do that to destroy the law or the prophet. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For who? For you. For me. He came to fulfill it. Verse 17. Okay. He came to fulfill it. Matthew 5, 17. Matthew 5, 17. Okay. He came to fulfill it. He says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophet. I did not come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. Why? Because you couldn't do it. Because the law, you were to obey all the law, not some. Matthew 5, 17. 
you are to obey all the law. Now, when you obey all the law, such blessings of God came upon you. If you disobey all, because the law was for you to obey all. It didn't say if you obey some. And so just imagine that you cannot or you couldn't obey all and therefore the curse. Well, thank God for Jesus. See, this is why it's very important for you to accept the, the work of Jesus concerning you that he did away with all your curse and your sins. And again, this is what I keep saying that if Jesus then has done this for you, beloved, and taken away the curse, which was supposed to be upon you, then why are you living your life as though you were under a curse? Why are you living your life? Because somebody, you know, frightened you with that, that thought has programmed your mind that you are under a curse because something is not working, hasn't, it is, you know, what you're expecting hasn't come and therefore you are under a curse. Or therefore you're still under a curse of, of uh, um, Adam and Eve. So, so then what is the sense, what is the, what is the, what is the sense of Jesus coming and all that he has to do, gave his life up, shared his blood, his blood was shared because if you, if you study the scripture, you realize that when you, 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 you broke the law, okay, there's a remission of sin and that is by blood because the covenant, the covenant that God made with man can only be broken by, you know, I mean, can only be, um, 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 uh, uh, be, be put together by blood. It was a blood covenant. It was a blood covenant. That is why God had to use blood to, you know, justify or to, to try to, um, to uh, make up for, your short, for, for our shortfalls and bring us back to the table. Are you getting the revelation here? You see the importance of Jesus and why you must accept Jesus so that you come into that family. If not, you are still in that old place trying to, you know, to justify, trying to do everything in your own power, in your own ability. And beloved, you can't. No, you cannot. Mm -mm. So it's so important for you to receive Jesus, the work of Jesus Christ concerning you. He died for you to do away with your sins. He shed his blood to cleanse your sins. To he sacrificed his blood because the blood was needed to sacrifice for your sins and my sins. Even once a year, as the priest, the high priest goes to the sanctuary and, um, and, uh, and do the sacrifices. Are you listening? My goodness, this is exciting. This is exciting. I mean, and so, and so beloved, I want you to know that it is expediently important for you to give your life to Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus. Receive that work he did for you. The finished work. He came to put, he didn't, Jesus didn't come to die for himself. He wasn't, he was, he wasn't, he wasn't born a sinner. There was no sin in him. But he took your sin upon himself. Okay? So that he can, he can, he can, I want to, let's read some scripture here. Um, look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's see something here, very important. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Um, glory be to God. Watch this. And he died, look at Jesus. He died <clears throat> for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Jesus died. He died, he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, 
but for him who died for, for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Here we go again. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him that's no longer in the flesh. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You see this? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, see, that is where the difference is. Are you in Christ? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Are you in Christ? If you are not in Christ, you are not part of it. Beloved, I'm telling you, that's what it is. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Why? Because Jesus Christ has, has, he, has, he has come to deal with the old. The old thing. So you being in him, the, your old self is dead. It's, not long, it's no, no longer your old self living, but your new self in Christ. Therefore, if any, watch this. If anyone, so if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, beloved, you are not part of it. You are not. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you, yes, Christ died for everybody. So, but if you are not, if you have been received it, if you don't believe what he did and receive it, how are you part of him? How are you part of him? You tell me. How are you part of him? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Isn't that interesting? Watch this now, verse 18. Now all things are of God. All who has reconciled, reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Not the ministry of condemnation, as we saw earlier. Not the ministry of, we don't have the ministry of condemnation. We have the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We implore you, we, we urge you, we beg you basically, all right, on behalf of Christ to reconcile yourself, to give your life to, you know, uh, to God, to Christ. For he, watch this now, for he made him who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I'm done. He knew no sin. Jesus didn't know any sin. He wasn't a sinner. But he was made a sinner for us, that through him we, be, we have our righteousness through him to God. So, beloved, why, what is holding you up for not giving your life to Jesus? You're waiting for tomorrow. There's no tomorrow. It's not guaranteed. What is going to happen to you when you die today? And you, you want you, you, I mean, you can't say you want, you're going to be with Jesus, because Scripture tells you and I that it's a, it's, it is appointed to man once to die, and after that, judgment. When you are judged, where do you think you're going to be? Where you, where you think you're going to be? On the, on the side of Jesus, or where? If you have not received him as your Lord and Savior. So right now, I want to give you that opportunity to do that. And allow the Holy Spirit to come in you and continue to work in you. Don't worry yourself about what you are going through right now. We all go through stuff. <laughs> uh, a good fa pa a pastor that I really admire much. Uh, he says that um, 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 everybody has issues. Everybody has issues. And that's true. Everybody have issues. Who don't have issues? 
you see but you have to first take the step of faith by allowing jesus to come into your life and take it to take residence in you and then his holy spirit will take over and working in you and bringing you to that place you know closer to god so let us pray if you are that person you want to give your life to the lord right now my my assignment was to present this gospel to you yours is to believe the gospel of jesus christ and become part of the family and so if you want to do that pray that prayer with me say lord jesus i have heard this word that you came to be a sinner concerning my life so therefore i didn't know that but now i know so therefore i'm i'm receiving you as my lord and savior come into my life jesus take a control of me forgive me of that sin that i i was even doubting and now let the holy spirit take over from here on until i see you face to face i thank you for receiving me you said that if anyone comes to you you will in no wise cast them out so i believe and i receive you as my lord and savior i thank you write my name in your book and let the holy spirit begin to work in me beloved if you pray this prayer by faith and not doubting jesus has taken over your life yes it's that, that simple and um, um get yourself into the bible begin to read begin to read his word his holy his holy spirit will will teach you because that is what he's come to do to lead you into all truth read his word spend time with him and then watch what your life is going to become henceforth you will see very soon that you you are not you are not the same old person if anyone be in christ if anyone be in christ is not it's a new creation if anyone be in christ you are not in the old you are in the new life may god bless you all right may god bless you until i come yourself your way same time until i come your way same time tomorrow join me same time 10 eastern 9 central and um so i believe it's seven uh the west coast time and 2 p.m gmt god bless you go to my website go to the website www.patrickquenoministries.com and uh please um uh, you know get in there a lot a lot of information are there if you want to be um, um a financial contributor uh, or, or a supporter to this ministry for us to advance the gospel in other areas of life please do that there's a button there that says donate you can go on there it's a paypal you can use your paypal or if you want to use your cash app uh, this is the number that you need to use for the cash app and that is 914-572-9816 okay um other informations are there for you to uh, um be able to reach us all right send us your prayer request send us your your praise report as well as by watching or uh, come being part of this broadcast on daily basis may god bless you until i come the same way tomorrow i want you to know you don't have no trouble all you need is your faith in god and in all thy getting get understanding